All right, this will be a recap of the discussion that we had about this painting in class, okay? This painting is called the Palico Verso, which means turned thumb, painted by a guy named Jean-Léon Jérôme in 1872. That's not the stuff you're gonna need for like a quiz on this in the future, but just to recap anyhow. It is important when it was painted. It was painted in 1872, which is a long time ago, but an even longer time is in between when this place, the Colosseum, was actually in use and when it was painted. This painting was almost 2,000 years after this building opened and almost 1,500 years after it closed or quit being used. But it's still regarded as a very accurate depiction, or at least it was. As archaeologists and historians have found more about the Colosseum, we've realized more and more how many things Jean Léon got wrong, okay? Still very, very impressive, still very impactful. This painting alone has shaped how people think about the Colosseum, even though it's quite inaccurate, which is kind of the point of the discussion that we had, is that even a piece of art that's really wonderful and beautiful like this, and in some ways is accurate, in other ways can be very inaccurate and can make us assume things that aren't the case. So we're gonna highlight some of those. We're gonna start with the actual structure itself. So, some things that Jean Leon uh, left out. We talked about the cubby holes that we should see surrounding the perimeter of the Colosseum floor. We talked about some uses for those. Main use we talked about was having archers there to protect the crowd. Because remember, it wasn't just fighting that took place here. It was, uh, you can kind of think of it like a circus or a zoo. They had wild exotic creatures on display here too. Some of those creatures were meeting their end, getting killed. Um, so they may try to get out of what's trying to kill them and jump into the stands and bite somebody's face off. So they had archers stationed here so they could defend the crowds, okay? So those things are missing, not a big deal. Um, something else that's missing is protection for the emperor. So we talked about how we can tell this is the emperor's seat. Uh, there's some obvious things about it. What's missing though is any sort of net or protection for the emperor because if he's sitting this close, he also could be a prime target. Uh, if you know someone is going to be near the emperor with a weapon, uh, what's to stop you to hire them or say, you know, I'll take care of your family and your family's children if you do this for me, if you chuck the spear at the emperor. So the emperor was protected and we don't see that protection here. Also in the structure, Jean Leon shows us two sections of seating when there should be four, okay? There should be four different separate sections of seating, okay? That's another difference we talked about that Jean Leon missed in his own research, okay? Um, we can now go on to some more structural things. Um, and then talk about the actual fighting. So we talked about this section of seating uh, reserved for the Vestal Virgins who are sitting here. They actually should be opposite the emperor, not next to the emperor. So we shouldn't be able to see them from this view. And perhaps that's why Jean Leon decided to put them there anyway, because he wanted them to be in the painting and there wasn't a way to do that and then also be accurate as far as where they should be seated because they should be seated directly across from the emperor. And there's not really a way to include them both in the painting without you not being able to see them because they're so small if you painted the entire Colosseum, okay? There are some really interesting uh, things that Jean Leon got right structurally, which are impressive. One of which, which is kind of neat, is something that we can't even see in the painting, but we can see evidence of it. You notice how these shadows are falling and how we're getting little slivers of light? Those are being cast from the sunshades that were affixed to the outside edge at the top of the Colosseum that could then be moved around by people to provide shade for some of the people in the Colosseum itself. You can see these people are not in the shade. You can see some of these rectangular fields of shade um, with some light coming through them. That matches the evidence we have for those sun shields. 
which, you know, they couldn't have survived very long. They're made of a material that's not going to last very long. So it's pretty cool that uh, in his research, Jean Leon was able to find evidence of that and then include it in his painting. Okay, some other things. Uh, let's get on to things related to fighting. So we see all these people with their thumbs pointed down. Okay, and that's what this painting gets its name from, the Palacoverso, which means turned thumb. We have evidence that says a turned thumb was used to show uh, what should be done at the end of a match. Anyone in the crowd could show with hand signals what they thought should happen. Uh, a hand with the thumb side up, but with the thumb pressed down onto your pointer finger, making a fist, that meant good fight, move on, no one needs to die. The gesture isn't described for what the turned thumb is. So we have to guess. And Jean Leon guessed that a turned thumb meant a thumbs down. Probably, probably because in France, in the 1800s, that was a gesture that was used. So he reads the evidence of turned thumb. What might that mean? Eh, maybe it means what I know of now as a thumbs down. It's more likely that this gesture, now that we have more evidence, was actually just turned sideways and then a gesture was made towards the neck to imitate the death blow that the losing gladiator would receive, which was normally a sword inserted behind or to the side of the neck and pressed straight down through your vital organs. Sounds like a fun way to go, okay? Last thing we'll talk about is the fight itself. So, most people think of gladiator battles as this type of thing, a melee or an all-for-one or a, you know, a whole bunch of people just fighting each other last person standing wins. We learned that it's much more like boxing or fencing. It was only one at a time during true gladiator battles. If it was more than one at a time, then it's not a gladiator battle. It's a namakia or a recreation of a war, which is basically like just theater, but you've already decided that the people that are going to lose are going to actually lose and actually die. Those people were usually slaves or prisoners. But if you have two people that are trained to fight and are fighting each other and they are gladiators, then it was one versus one. And there was a referee present and there were rules that had to be followed. And someone could request that the match be over. The other way that it ends is someone dies or someone can't continue to fight. That's when the turned thumb comes in, which is partially what this painting is, is depicting, that our presumed victor, the guy that's still standing, is looking to get information about what he should do next. Should he let this last guy go, or should he kill him? This isn't really how it worked. There would have been a ref present. He would not be looking at the Vestal Virgins. He would be looking at whoever paid for the games, which most likely would be the emperor, but could be somebody else. That would be the person that would make that decision to let him know what to do. But there would only be two people there in their fight, okay? So, so those are some of the things that we highlighted in our discussion about the things that Jean-Léon got uh, surprisingly right and the things that he got surprisingly wrong.